Welcome back. Today we're going to visit Vitae Spirits in Charlottesville, Virginia. We met with Ian, the founder of Vitae Spirits and also a former professor of microbiology at the University of Virginia. After enjoying a cocktail, we took our tour. All right, so let's start our tour. So, uh, so Ian's going to give us the tour. Thank you, Ian. We appreciate that. No problem. All right. Everything that's produced in this facility starts off as that. And I bring it out so that you can taste oh. it. Uh, there's clean sticks here, dirty sticks here. Ideally, you'd like to extract the sugarcane juice directly from the sugarcane, but there's a problem. The problem is you have to be right at the field to do that because it's so unstable. So, and we're hundreds of miles away from the nearest uh, sugarcane fields. 80% uh, of the sugar in the U.S. is made in uh, Louisiana. There's a little bit in Florida, a little bit in Texas, and a super, super small amount in uh, uh, South Carolina, actually, too, mm. near Charleston. Yeah. Um, but, um, so we're too far away for me to have that juice. So the closest thing I can get to that juice is evaporated sugarcane juice, where they basically um, heat it up a little bit under vacuum, the water boils off, and we, they boil it down to a level that has a high enough sugar concentration to become a preservative. So strawberry preserves are partly preserved by the fact that there's a bunch of sugar in with those strawberries. Um, so this has like a six to eight month shelf life now rather than a half an hour uh, mm -hmm. shelf life. And so that's the closest I can get to sugarcane juice. This stuff, I'm about to make a movement if you want to follow. This stuff is far too wow. viscous for us to pump. Our pumps would die yeah, if we tried to move yeah. that stuff. So what we do instead, if you want to take a step or two this way, we forklift it onto the second story. I cut a hole in the floor up there and I take the whole bag and box and I stick it above that hole on a big scale. We keep the room at 90 degrees and then I just open up the valve and I sky drop 450 pounds of it into the cooker here to start the process. So that all the dormant yeast and bacteria that are in there, when we add that water, could start eating that sugar. Uh, and making vinegar and acetic acid is a, or lactic acid. So what we do is we pasteurize it. We have a steam and we inject steam into it and we heat it up to 170 degrees for uh, half an hour. That is pasteurization. That kills 99.9% .9 of the wild things that are in there. So that then when we pump coolant through and coils inside of here, we bring it back down to 85 degrees and, and we put in our yeast, and essentially our yeast is the only thing growing in there. There's no competition, and it's producing alcohol instead of all this other junk that can be produced by um, wild organisms. So it's, it's partly a, a quality control consistency thing that, that we do. Um, not all the distilleries do that. Some don't do that cooking process, and they're, they have more irregular um, products because of it. The next step is to move the mixture to the fermentation tanks. The tanks are kept at a controlled temperature. But we, uh, we keep it at 85 degrees. We use a yeast that was growing on sugarcane plants on the island of Guadeloupe in the French Caribbean. And we ferment it for five days. Uh, and we get up to about 8 or 9% alcohol in five days. And uh, I'm going to give you a taste if you'd like to try it. Mm -hmm. okay. But it's okay. I wouldn't say it's something that I enjoy per se. But it's okay. It's pretty sour. And so one thing that um, we do add acid to it. Not only acid, but other nutrients are added to the fermentation tank, as Ian will explain. Um, so we add a little bit of phosphoric acid, which is the same acid that's in Coca-Cola. But it's also phosphorus, so that's a basic nutrient that yeast need. Mm -hmm. Like our, the DNA that they're producing for themselves, that's phosphorus. They need a phosphorus source. We also add a nitrogen source so they can make their proteins. Mm -hmm. And we add a, a vitamins to it, also a bunch of B vitamins are added to it also. Juice into our copper pot still. And uh, we use copper for a reason. It's not just for the aesthetics of it all. So copper naturally binds to and reacts to sulfur compounds. And there's very few sulfur compounds that we find attractive. By removing the sulfur compounds, the taste of the spirits are improved. So we would much rather have all sulfur compounds stick to our copper back here and not carry through into our end products to, to make them all stinky. Uh, and uh, another simple thing about copper too is that it's a good heat conductor. And that's why you have copper 
pots and pans at home is because it spreads out the heat and makes it less likely that uh, you're going to scorch your, your uh, food. So we don't actually initially take any, any measures to separate out the good tasting stuff from the bad tasting stuff. Uh, what we do is it's called a stripping run. And that is we pour in as much heat as we have, we evaporate everything that has a lower boiling point than water, so that it goes out of the top of the still, and it goes to our condenser where we cool the vapors back down into a liquid. What we get from that is uh, what we call low wines, and I'll get you a sample, you can hang up there. And basically we go from that brown yeasty stuff that you guys just tasted into that. And so that is now colorless, looks like water. Um, it's gone from eight or nine percent alcohol up to this is about 30 percent alcohol. Um, it's a crude distillation. You can smell and or taste this if you wanted to. Um, and that's our first step. Now it's time to separate the good stuff from the bad stuff. And once we have 250 gallons of the low lines, we load that and distill for a second pass through. And on the second pass through, we do take measures to separate out the good stuff from the bad stuff. What we want to get out of it is ethanol. Ethanol boils at 173 degrees. And on top of that, there's a bunch of other contaminants in there, some of which are dangerous, some of which taste good. Uh, one of the dangerous ones that people worry about is methanol. Uh, that boils at 148 degrees. And just 50 milliliters of pure methanol is considered a lethal dose. And less than that can give you neurological damage and blindness. So that's one of the things we need to separate out. Mm -hmm. um, so we do that this time by first heating up slowly so heat up slowly so that the things that want to boil tend to go into the vapor phase and leave the pot before things that don't want to be in the vapor phase. So that's, that's the first thing, heat it slowly. The second thing is that we also shove the vapors from the back of this into uh, what we call the rectifying column. By heating and cooling the liquid, Ian explained how the rectifying column separated out the good stuff from the bad stuff. And every time you do a transition from liquid to vapor to liquid to vapor, you're increasing the probability that something with a low boiling point, like the methanol, that's more likely to go on and rise into the next step, where it's less probable that something like water with a high boiling point, that's more likely to stay there. And actually water builds up on these trays, and then it overflows, and the water drains back down to the pot, while things with lower boiling points are rising and moving to the left, so in physical space, we're separating things out based on their boiling point. Um, another level of control that we have on this particular still is that we have these pipes that we can pump coolant in the top of the column. And we can form what I like to think of as a thermal gateway, temperature gateway. So the stuff that comes out first, we refer to as the heads. And these are all things that have a lower boiling point than ethanol. So this does contain methanol. The liquid that comes out first is called the heads, and that's the bad stuff, the stuff you don't want to drink. But as the process goes on, the good stuff starts coming out, and you have to be ready to catch it. We have to catch the transition from the heads, which are the nasty solvent smells, mm -hmm. and that transitions into our hearts, the hearts that we keep. And that's when we start getting kind of pineapple, and mango, and banana, and things of that sort, things that we like. And so once we sense that transition, which is like a five or 10 minute window, we come over here and we throw these valves so that we stop collecting in our waste container over here and we start collecting in our heads container, or sorry, our hearts container. Where that's right down there. Keep. And that, that's basically like the good stuff that is, that is uh, drinkable. Near the end of the process, there's the tails fraction, which can be further refined. A uh, fraction is called the tails fraction. Uh, that contains a lot more water, has rubbing alcohol in it. Um, in our case, it also has a lot of our rum flavor. So the rum oils are in the tails fraction. So what we do is we collect up our tails and we actually distill it for a third time. And it's a much simpler mixture at that point because we've taken out the heads and the hearts. So that makes it that much easier for us to separate out the rum flavors and a little bit of ethanol, uh, separate that away from the water and the rubbing alcohol. And actually, that is considered the best stuff. That's called the Queen's Cut. So as we mix that into our parts from the second pass through, so we kind of flavor, we add more flavor to our, uh, our main product. And that's what our platinum rum is. And our platinum rum, that liquid is the base for essentially everything we do. Um, we have five rums now. Our barrel-aged rum is that liquid that I put um, 
in Cabernet Franc wine barrels and bourbon barrels for two and a half years. Um, we then have our Golden Room, which is actually our best seller, and that's a collaboration with uh, East Biscuit and Barbecue next door, where we get fresh sugar cane and we grill it on their hickory oak charcoal so it gets smoky and caramelized. And that's what we infuse into that rum to give it kind of butterscotchy, smoky flavors. We have a flat out smoked rum that's a pecan wood smoked rum um, that we recently released like six weeks ago, and a spice rum, which is heavy on vanilla and cloves and cinnamon and stuff like that. Um, that same liquid we use to make our four liqueurs and our three gins also. So um, we use the still to make our gin and a couple of our liqueurs. And, and here is how they all get bottled. And um, once we get to what our proof we're uh, diluting to, and then pump it into the rum cow. And the rum cow is the beginning of our, uh, our bottling line. And it takes about six people to run the bottling line efficiently. Uh, person number one grabs the bottles. We have all our glass bottles here. And that's uh, loaded onto the rum cow. And she fills it up. Um, person number two then is the capper. So you can put the caps in by hand, but having a little uh, Mechanical advantage keeps you from getting blisters so easily. Uh, person number three is the labeler. You put this on the floor and you step on that and then it rolls front and back label on. Person number four, I don't have the thing here, but they basically put a plastic sleeve over the top of it. And person number five slides that in the heating elements to shrink wrap it. So you have a tamper evidence seal. And then either uh, our distiller or, or I sit at the end and we're the quality control. We basically make sure it's filled, the labels are on straight. Then the bottles are boxed and off to market. All right, so now it's time to taste the finished product. Tasting time. Yay. Yay, tasting time. My personal favorite was the Golden Run, which is available in the ABC liquor stores in Virginia. We all enjoyed the informative tour and the tasting, but soon it was time to go. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully we'll see you again. Yeah, appreciate it. Appreciate all the information and uh, good luck with everything. Yeah, that was, that was a great tour. That's good. Until next time, safe travels.